when Jim Mars uh, first interviewed me, and uh, Jim is on top of everything, I want to tell you. And this this uh, wonderful investigator, this researcher, did some wonderful things because uh, he actually started uh, – working with me and looking at all my evidence, and he was just astonished. And then as he was looking at all this, and we're talking about hours and hours and hours, all of a sudden I said, well, you know, Lee told me that he was a member of an abort team. And Jim just about fell off his chair. He said, what? He said, you know, that's not in any of the literature. It's just not there. He had just recently interviewed Tosh Plumley, a CIA pilot, and, and apparently others, um, they see this uh, board team existed. Nobody knew about it, and here I'm telling him about it. Something else, too, uh, I'd like to tell you. In 2003, you hear me speaking about the Kennedy assassination. Lee called it the big event. And so I call it the big event there in 2003. Well, we don't hear Hunt, I mean, um, excuse me, St. John, you know, mm-hmm. is, um, yeah, we have, uh, we have, uh, all of a sudden we have, it was the deathbed confession, and but, that's exactly yeah, what uh, Howard Hunt was it, saying, the, the and big event. he calls event. it the big event, and yep. yeah, I called it that in 2003. Spurgeon and Morales and uh, people of that uh, ilk stayed in uh, apartment houses uh, during the preparations for uh, the big event. Uh, their addresses were very... Uh, a subject to change so that uh, where a fellow like uh, Morales had been in one day, you are not necessarily associated with that same address the following day. In short, it was a very mobile uh, uh, experience. Let me point out at this point that if I had wanted to uh, fictionalize uh, what went on in Miami and elsewhere during the run up for the big event, I would have done so. But uh, I don't want any uh, unreality to tinge this particular uh, story or the information, I should say. I was a bench warmer on it, and uh, I had a reputation for honesty. I think it's essential to refocus on what this information that I've been providing you, uh, and you alone, by the way, consists of what is important in the story is that we've backtracked the chain of command up uh, through uh, up through Cordmeyer and laying the uh, the uh, doings at the doorstep of LBJ. He, in my opinion, had a an almost maniacal urge to become president. He regarded uh, JFK as a, as he was, in fact, an obstacle to achieving that. Uh, he could have waited for JFK to finish out his term and then undoubtedly a second term. So that would have put the LBJ at the head of a long list of people who were waiting.